We're very excited that you are interested in applying for a faculty-led study abroad program. Faculty-led programs are generally short-term study abroad programs developed by an RIT faculty member to introduce you to a new cultural perspective on a topic within their discipline. It is extremely important that you watch this brief tutorial to understand all the steps necessary to apply for this program and other important factors to consider so you can make an informed decision about pursuing this opportunity. There is a lot of information we cover, and so I'd like to highlight the top five takeaways. The first takeaway is meet with your financial aid director before the application deadline and apply for scholarships early. Each faculty-led program has a student budget worksheet that breaks down the program cost, such as the tuition, program fee, and estimated out-of-pocket expenses. Depending on your financial aid package, you may be able to receive financial aid to help cover these costs. But since students' financial aid packages are different, you must meet with your financial aid director to see what you are eligible for. Be sure to meet with your financial aid director before this deadline so you can make an informed decision about participating once you've been accepted. There are scholarships available for study abroad, but often the scholarship deadlines do not align with faculty-led application deadlines, and so you may need to apply for scholarships before the application deadline, so start early. Number two, applying for the program in the Compass does not commit you to anything. All students must complete an application in the Compass to apply for a study abroad program, but by simply Applying does not mean you are committed to the program. After the application deadline, we will make acceptance decisions and then typically give you one week to confirm your participation. You can then decide whether or not you plan to commit to the program. If you plan to confirm, you will need to sign a billing agreement in the Compass. If you are no longer interested, let us know and we will withdraw your application. Number three the non-refundable deposit. If you do confirm your participation in signing the billing agreement, you will be responsible for paying a non-refundable deposit in all program fees. If you end up withdrawing after you confirm, you will still have to pay the non-refundable deposit. And so it is very important that you've considered all factors such as the program costs, financial aid, academic requirements, and your health and safety before you commit to the program. Number four, booking your own flight. In most cases, you will be responsible for booking your own flight to and from the country destination. Many of our faculty-led programs take place before or after the semester, and so booking your own flight gives you more flexibility to depart from an airport closer to home, and if you plan to do independent travel before or after the program, you can extend your time abroad. You may also be able to find more affordable flight deals. Studying abroad is all about getting out of your comfort zone, and so while it can be intimidating, intimidating if you're booking an international flight for the first time. It will be very empowering once you do this on your own. If you have any concerns about booking your own flight, contact the faculty director for assistance. And then the last takeaway, takeaway number five, research the country destination. Do some research to understand the destination you'll be going to. I recommend starting with asking the faculty director. They likely have traveled there before and also designed the program, so they have firsthand knowledge to share in regards to cultural norms and customs and other travel tips. Not only can you learn more about the cultural expectations and what the coursework and activities will be like abroad, but other information information, such as if there are any country entry requirements, such as visas or vaccines, or travel advisories to be aware of. It's important to understand that countries can have very different cultural values and norms than the U.S. and not have the same services or amenities that are, you are used to here. So do some country research ahead of time to get a sense of what traveling there might be like for you.
Before we dive into the steps for how to apply for a faculty-led program, I'd first like to review the eligibility criteria to participate in a study abroad program. First and foremost, you must be a matriculated student at RIT. You also must be in a good academic standing and have a minimum 2.5 cumulative GPA at the time of the application. Keep in mind, some faculty-led programs may have higher GPA requirements. If your GPA does not meet the minimum requirement, you may appeal by submitting a letter to RIT Global, and this will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. You also must be cleared by RIT's Conduct and Conflict Resolution Office, not have any financial holds on your e-services account, and attend the mandatory pre-departure program. To study abroad, you will also need a valid passport at the time of travel. You can still apply and be fully considered for a study abroad program without a valid passport, but you are responsible for securing a valid passport by the travel date so you can fully participate and complete the program requirements. Depending on your citizenship and country entry requirements, you may also need to obtain a visa. You will be responsible for obtaining all necessary visa documents and applying for a visa if applicable. Also, make sure your passport is valid six months after your program ends, or you may be denied entry by Border Patrol. Faculty-led programs may have additional criteria and preferred qualifications such as prerequisites, higher GPA minimums, year levels, and demonstrated motivation or maturity level, which are typically assessed by additional application components such as essays, references, or interviews. To see what the program eligibility requirements are for a specific faculty-led program, please read the program eligibility section on the Faculty Programs Compass page. Now that we have covered the eligibility requirements and the five takeaways, it's important to also spend some time to think about whether or not this program you are considering is a good fit for you so that you can make an informed decision when it comes time to commit to the program. We will be going over important factors to consider during the application steps, but here are some other important topics to consider as well. For instance, have you considered how the program meets your academic, professional, and personal goals? Assuming the course meets your degree requirements and, al and aligns with your academic interests, it's important to understand that study abroad programs have different levels of immersion. For instance, faculty-led programs are taught by RIT professors, and you will be studying and traveling with other RIT students. You will likely be in a group setting the majority of the time and have a busy set schedule with limited free time to travel independently. The level of group activities and independent travel may vary program to program, and so talk with your faculty director to learn more about the travel logistics, living arrangements, and what the coursework and day-to-day -day activities will be like, so you can determine if you're comfortable with the expectations and the program components will meet your academic and personal goals. We talk about health and well-being later in this presentation, but I'd like to reiterate this. Going abroad has the potential to heighten pre-existing health conditions or contribute to new ones, and so it is important to think about how you will manage your health abroad, especially since health services and resources may look different than what, are you, what you are used to back at home. Even though faculty-led programs are typically only a few weeks long, struggling with a health issue abroad can have a huge impact on your experience. For instance, if you have dietary restrictions or allergies, it may be helpful to know ahead of time how likely or not you'll be able to find dietary accommodations in the country. If you've received disability or access services on campus, we highly recommend contacting your access coordinator to see what services will be available to you while you are abroad. Disability and access services may be more limited abroad and other countries may not have the same disability laws or accessibility requirements in the US and their cultural values about people with disabilities may differ. 
So do some research about the country to better understand how accessible the country is for people with disabilities. It's also important to consider different identities and how these may be embraced more or less in the country. Consider your identities, such as your race, ethnicity, your gender identity, sexual orientation, religion, or nationality, and research how these diverse characteristics may be perceived in the country. For instance, in some countries, LGBTQI individuals still do not have any rights, and so your safety may be compromised. It is important to be aware of how your diverse characteristics may impact your experience so you can de develop a plan for how you will navigate this abroad. In more serious cases, your identity can potentially put you in a dangerous situation, and so traveling to some of these locations may not be in your best interest. If you have concerns about this, contact RIT Global, and we can help refer you to other countries that may be a better fit depending on your identities. Talk to your family or the important people in your life about your interests in studying abroad. We understand there can be a lot of uncertainty with studying abroad and traveling to another country. To help with this, we have a page on our website dedicated to parents. You can share this with them and they are always welcome to reach out to RIT Global or the faculty director with any questions. Lastly, country entry requirements vary country to country. Depending on your citizenship status, you may need a visa to enter the country. Applying for a visa takes a lot of time and can be very expensive. Research ahead of time to see if you will need a visa and what the requirements and costs are so you can be sure you, you will be able to do this before you commit to the program. In addition to the visas, there are also maybe vaccine requirements. Talk with your doctor to see if you have any questions or concerns about the vaccines. Overall, studying abroad is a big commitment, so it's important to make sure you find a program that will work well for you and meet your goals. There are some additional things you should familiarize yourself with if you are planning on studying abroad. To learn more about these topics, we strongly suggest you visit the Getting Started and Essential Information section on our website to learn more. Now, let's walk through the application steps for a faculty-led program. We're going to use the application checklist as a guide. You can find a copy of this checklist in the Compass or linked in this video description. Please use it to make sure you complete all the required steps. Step one is to complete and submit the RAT Compass application. The Compass is our online program and application database. You can access it by going to studyabroad.rit.edu and clicking on the Compass icon. Log in with your RIT username and password. Prior to starting an application, you will need to first complete your Compass profile. In the Compass profile, you have the option to disclose information about yourself that will help us better understand your needs and preferences, such as special accommodations and opting in or out of gender-inclusive housing. In addition, some information such as your diverse identities can help us determine your eligibility for study abroad scholarships and other resources that may be helpful to set you up for success. Please note that these optional disclosures will not be used to make acceptance decisions. You may have found a program you're interested in after receiving an email or information from a faculty director. In case you didn't get a direct link to the program page and application, you can search and apply for a program by logging into the Compass and searching for your program by modifying a few of the search filters, such as putting in the program type, RIT, faculty-led program, and using a keyword such as the name of the program. This provides you with important information about the program. At the bottom, click on Apply 
to start your application. The Acompass application may take 10 to 15 minutes to complete. In the application, you will be required to give us permission to check your conduct record as well as sign a liability waiver and FERPA waiver. Once you complete the application, please do not forget to click Submit. You will also be able to opt in to be automatically considered for an RIT Education Abroad Travel Grant when you submit an application in the Compass. The Education Abroad Grants are awarded based on financial need. In the Financial Aid and Scholarship section, we ask you to sign the Scholarship Acknowledgement to give us permission to check your financial aid status so we can determine your eligibility. Most students who have high financial need are awarded $500. Be sure to save and continue in each section of the application and submit it at the end. Starting or submitting an application does not commit you to the program. We will contact you shortly after the application deadline, and once you are accepted, we will ask you to confirm your participation. Some programs may require additional steps, such as submitting a portfolio, references, or an interview. All requirements will be outlined in the Compass or the Faculty Director. We also recommend that you reach out to the Faculty Director and let them know that you're interested in their program and if you have any additional questions. This way, they can get to know you better before they make acceptance decisions. Step 2. Contact your academic advisor to make sure that the courses you plan to take will meet your degree requirements. In addition to the degree requirements, make sure you do not have any schedule conflicts with when the course will be offered. Step three is to obtain a budget worksheet. The budget worksheet is available on the faculty-led Programs Compass page. The budget worksheet outlines all the costs to participate in the program. It will include real costs billed to your RITE services account, as well as additional out-of-pocket expenses. All of these are potentially eligible for financial aid. Make an appointment with your financial aid director before the application deadline and send them a copy of the budget worksheet a few days in advance of your appointment. Step four is to identify. Step five, evaluate your health needs and special accommodations. If you will require access services, make an appointment with them to determine what support and accommodations, such as captionists or interpreters, might be available to you on this program. For other special accommodations, please contact your access coordinator in the Disability Services Office. Study abroad has the potential to heighten pre-existing medical, mental health, personal issues, or contribute to new ones. It is important to consider how you will manage these things while abroad. RIT has many resources available to assist with this. Please contact our office if you need help finding resources or visit our health and safety website page for additional information. It's important to complete these steps before the application deadline. In addition to completing the initial Compass application, it's very important to meet with Access Services, Disability Services, your academic advisor, and financial aid before the application deadline so that when we are making acceptance decisions, you are ready to confirm your participation. The application deadline will be listed in the Compass. Step six is to confirm your participation. A couple weeks after the application deadline, you will receive an email from the RIT Study Abroad Office about your acceptance status. If you are accepted, you will have about a week to log back into the Compass and complete step three, signing the participation confirmation agreement. If you are no longer interested in the program, 
please notify RIT Global so we can withdraw your application. By signing the Participation Confirmation Agreement, you are committing to paying the non-refundable deposit and all program fees. Please be sure to read and understand the Student Withdrawal Refund Policy prior to signing the Participation Agreement so you fully understand the financial consequences if you decide to withdraw from the program after confirming. Step 7. Pay the non-refundable deposit. The non-refundable deposit amount is stated on the student budget worksheet for the program. The deposit is a portion of the program fee. Once you confirm your participation, you will be billed the non-refundable deposit to your eServices account and will be responsible for paying this. You generally have two weeks to pay the deposit and please note, you cannot use your study abroad scholarship to pay the deposit since the scholarship won't be received until the following term. Step 8. Prepare for the course and travel. After the confirmation deadline, in addition to paying the non-refundable deposit, you will be registered by an advisor from the faculty's college for the course. Please be sure to upload your passport information in the Compass as we will need this information to make reservations. If you do not have a valid passport, apply for or renew your passport as soon as possible. It can take up to 12 weeks to receive a passport after you submit an application. If applicable, complete your visa paperwork in a timely manner. The faculty director will follow up with additional steps and details about the program, such as when to book your flight. Step 9 is to complete the mandatory Bon Voyage pre-departure program. This is required for all students and will prep you for health and safety abroad. You will be notified about how to sign up for the pre-departure program via email. Step 10 is to download the insurance ID card. RIT provides international health insurance free of charge. You will receive an email with more information about how to download your insurance card. Step 11 is to enroll in the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program with the U.S. State Department, also known as STEP. This will register you with the U.S. Embassy in case of an emergency, and it also provides travel alerts and tips. Finally, visit the Preparing to Go section of our website, with which provides more country-specific information and guidance as you prepare to depart. In addition, please review the Student Policies section on our website to understand the expectations and responsibilities for participating in a study abroad program. It might seem like a lot to do, but it is worth the preparation so you can spend your time abroad focusing on enjoying the moment. If you have any questions about this process, you can reach out to the faculty director or the RIT Study Abroad Office at 585-475-4466 or global at rat.edu. Thank you.